Hi there, my name is James Menzies, owner of J Menzies Photography. I'm here at Dallas-Fort Worth Alliance Airfield on behalf of Airshow View 360 to film the arrival of the United States Air Force Thunderbirds display team who will be flying in shortly to set up for this weekend's air show at Dallas-Fort Worth Alliance Airfield. They're going to be coming in and doing a quick circuit to uh, just check out the airspace as they haven't been here for a few years. So it's going to be an awesome show and um, we're going to be interviewing some of the pilots, getting some details on the planes and uh, um, hopefully be a great day. Uh, the weather's great. Um, hopefully this weekend the rain will hold off. There could be some storms on Thursday evening into Friday morning, but hopefully it should clear out by Friday. Um, so. Saturday and Sunday looks to be fine weather for the air show. It's going to be a great time. Bring out your families. Uh, gates open at 9 a.m. Uh, get here early for a good view. And I um, hope everyone gets to come and see the air show and, of course, the awesome United States Thunderbirds. Thanks a lot, and hope you enjoy this video.
Alex Turner. And uh, Alex, uh, how long have you been in the uh, Air Force? I've been in the Air Force for 11 years. 11, 11 years, wow, that's awesome. So what was the first plane you flew? The first plane I ever flew was, like many, was a Cessna 172. Cessna 172? Indeed. I've got a radio control one of those. That's about as far as my flying skills go. Um, now tell me about the F-16, uh, the specific model that you're flying. Which, uh, which one is it? This is an F-16C model. It is a Block 52, which mm -hmm. means it has a Pratt & Whitney 229 engine in it. I've been flying the F-16 for about eight years now of a whole, um, a whole slew of different varieties. Uh, but this is the trim that we've got here. Uh, it's an amazing machine. It's got uh, more thrust than it weighs. Mm -hmm and pulls up to 9 G's and we'll fly at speeds of up to 0.94 Mach during the show this weekend. Wow, 9 G's. Uh, yeah, I think I'd probably pass out at half a G, so <laughs> not the healthiest person on the planet. Oh. But um, tell me, what, uh, what's been the most uh, challenging thing about flying with the Thunderbirds? The most challenging thing about flying with the Thunderbirds has been the degree of subtlety that goes into the show. Now, having flown the aircraft for so many years and in a variety of different uh, areas of responsibility, you know, the Pacific, Middle East and Europe, even with the amount of experience that I brought in, I was amazed at, at how much goes into the show uh, and, and the level of detail to which we fly. And so to, to be able to do that day in, day out at a variety of different air shows with terrain and towers and, and different layouts is, is what makes it quite a challenge. Yeah, I noticed when you guys came in today, you were flying around the airfield for about half an hour. Was that just to kind of get a feel of the airspace since you haven't been here in a while? It sure is. So that's what we call the site survey and in it we will run the lines that we're going to run during our practices later this weekend obviously the show this weekend so we're going to make sure that all of the towers that we've plotted are exactly where we thought they were we're going to add anything that maybe we didn't see before we're going to make sure that our altitudes are safe for all the different buildings and trees etc that you will find on the show line and take that information back to the drawing board so that we can execute a safe show for everyone that's brilliant now out of all the maneuvers what would you say is your favorite maneuver <laughs> Well, my favorite maneuver uh, as part of the solo team, uh, no kidding, is uh, I think it's the Calypso. And that is an, a maneuver in which number five, the lead solo, he starts just in front of me with just about nose tail separation, flips to the inverted position, and then I move forward to create uh, an image of, a, of our F-16s kind of mirrored with one on top of the other, with one being upside down. And it's a great challenge because the exact position that I fly is based on the show layout and so I have to get just the right amount of, of stack and width relative to number five as well as be perfectly smooth in order for that pass to look as it should so it's a different challenge every day so that's one of the reasons I love it. Now what's the most challenging or well, I want to say what's the most hair-raising experience you've had with the Thunderbirds? I'm sure you've been asked this question a lot of times, go on do, do tell us. It's, uh, it's, not a, it's not an awkward question at all, it's a great one and it's very, it was, I knew immediately when you asked, and it would be the first time that I performed the reflection pass with the instructor in my backseat as I was learning to be, a, uh, be the number six pilot. And uh, on this event, you know, every, in our training season, which is about four months out of the year, you know, the solos fly about 100 missions with instruction, with grade sheets and everything to ensure that we're performing, you know, moves in a proficient and safe manner. And so this is very early on in that training program. And again, I see number five uh, in front of me, and it's the same concept except he's rolling into me on this pass. Mm -hmm. And so to see the jet flip upside down up into you uh, from relative to you and to be just that close and see such a large piece of machinery do that, uh, I literally laughed out loud <laughs> in the seat and my instructor in the back uh, was like, get in there, because you got to move forward to get in a position. Yeah. And I was like, what? you want me to do what? And so he pushes the throttle forward and he just takes control of the aircraft. He's like, let me show you how fast you need to move. And I, I, my mouth was just agape at, at the, the proficiency he had, yeah. the smoothness that the Captain Eberling has, Nick, uh, through that. And I was just, it was amazed. And I, you know, it was amazing to me. Yeah. Um, and have, you know, have since gotten pretty, pretty darn good at it since. So that was yeah. probably the most hair-raising experience I've had on the team. Sounds kind of benign, uh, but you know, we start very high uh, when we when we learn to fly this profile. We also start much farther apart as the solos as we do all those opposing passes. Yeah. So we 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 build gradually as our proficiency and, and our consistency yeah. dictates to get way down to the 150 feet you're going to see here at the show, and to uh, a very, very, very close range laterally. But 
Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, you guys came uh, came across earlier this, this morning uh, on full burn, pretty close over our heads, and that was uh, absolutely deafening. <laughs> so I don't think I've ever actually seen you guys that low before. That was uh, pretty impressive. So we're so. running the lines for the sneak pass there. And in the sneak pass, we're trying to demonstrate just how... Uh, how much tactical surprise and shock that a fighter can bring to a fight. Uh, and that move that we do is very, uh, is very similar to what we call show of force, which our people are doing downrange right now. And so, yeah. you know, we have over 20,000 airmen, you know, active duty, reserve, guard, from yeah. bases just like here at, at Fort Worth Alliance um, that are downrange doing that right now to help scare enemy forces away from our friendly yeah. fighters, coalition fighters that are on the ground. Yeah. So. You know, it looks a little bit different downrange where there's some mountains and we're kicking flares out. We got bombs and missiles hanging. The jet looks a lot yeah. nastier yeah. and more mean. Yeah. Um, but you know, all of us have done that move downrange and to, in the yeah. in support of our of our comrades. So it's fun to do. Mm -hmm. It's fun for me to talk about that to share that part of what's going on. But that was always my favorite part of the show growing up because I'm an Air Force brat. Yeah. You know, so I grew up coming to the show and, and no kidding, the Thunderbirds are really what yeah. sparked my interest in aviation and then the Air Force and then fighters, kind of the whole the whole you know yeah. uh, linkage there. So to be able to do sneak passes, I'm the primary sneak pass pilot. Yeah. Uh, for the team is it's a great it's a great honor it's a great amount of fun because it's a simple maneuver you're going about a thousand feet per second so you get you have a very short window to nail it wow. yeah. you know but the effect that it gets on the crowd is for such a simple pass is uh is incredible so yeah brings a smile i was gonna face. say it made me definitely <laughs> jump earlier when you when you came around because i wasn't expecting it so um there was another question i just had that was uh another one i got i've got one question for you you don't, you don't have to answer it are you a fan of the blue angels i am you are i am I've got nothing but love for the Blue Angels. I watched them growing up a lot as well. Uh, they are kind of our partners in crime. Yeah. You know, they're, uh, to me, uh, and I think to the rest of the team, they're, they're like a brother or a, or a sister sibling where yeah. no one else is allowed to pick on them but us, yeah. you know, but, uh, but they're part of the family. They're part of our joint family. We have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of uh, coordination and, yeah. and consistent work and, and advice giving and taking that we do with them are especially our advanced pilot who shows up a day before us number eight yeah. to get the lay of the land and make sure that all this is set up properly yeah. um, you know we alternate show sites sometimes every other year and uh, and so we have a great healthy relationship with them um, and I uh, my my thoughts and prayers are obviously with them for for the rest of their season as well yeah, I was uh, very upset to hear about uh, pilot number six uh, this year, um, which was really unfortunate. Um, I heard that uh, one of the Thunderbirds had a similar um, ejection experience. That's true. Uh, I wonder who that could be. That uh, was actually me. Yeah, and uh, how, how did that come about? Well, the final report is, uh, is due to be released here very shortly. Mm -hmm. uh, and until it does, I still can't get into the details uh, of what happened. Suffice to say... I understand. Um, suffice to say, I'm very lucky to be here. Uh, we don't always have time to deal with every issue that uh, that can happen in the world of aviation But the fact that that I'm still here on this planet the fact that I'm still on this team is a testament to the training that I've been given over the years by a lot of the the old retired fighter pilots and those currently serving that taught me how to deal with Emergency situations. Yeah. So my ability to assess that is is all due to them and the work and time that they've put into me as they do with every other Air Force pilot as well as the folks that put the ejection seat in and make sure all those systems, our egress personnel, uh, that, that are specifically trained to ensure those work because they all work perfectly. And then also the aircrew flight equipment folks that pack my parachute because that again work perfectly. So um, there are a lot of people that I have to thank for, 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 for my continued life and, uh, and survival through that event. Yeah, absolutely. And we're really happy to have you still here. And uh, I can't imagine what terrifying experience that must have been having to actually eject. I mean, that's something no pilot ever wants to have to do in exactly. a situation. So, I mean, I've, I, I chase tornadoes for a living and I've been pretty close to big tornadoes and that's terrifying enough. So doing it at how many hundreds of miles per hour, I can't right. just imagine what that would feel like. So, but anyway, I thank you very much, Alex, for talking to me. I appreciate it. It's Stay pleasure. safe and uh, can't wait to see an awesome show this yeah. weekend. Yeah, absolutely. For anyone watching, the parting shot I would offer is uh, a personal invite to come out to the Bell Helicopter Fort Worth Alliance Air Show. Yep. It's, uh, the gates open at nine, they close at five. Uh, we're not the only ones flying. You're gonna see a Navy F-15, uh, excuse me, F-16, so, ah, stumbling over my jets here. Navy, Navy F-18 Hornet doing a tactical demo. You're gonna see some jumpers, you're gonna see some heritage planes, you're gonna have static displays like the F-35, our newest fighter that we're bringing into the Air Force. Um, 
and it's just going to be an incredible show. It's going to be a great day. So yeah, and I heard the F4 Phantom is going to be making a surprise appearance as well because uh, yeah. uh, they're apparently retiring it now. Uh, which is a shame because that was definitely one of my favorite Indeed. planes as a kid. Indeed, you know, the, the F-16 inherited much uh, from the F-4 and for those who have flown it. So uh, we have a lot of respect for that aircraft for sure. I'd love to fly one someday. It'd be cool. <laughs> All right, brilliant. Thanks a lot, Alex. Yes, Thanks a lot. Stay safe and put on a great show.